And here we are. Hey, everyone. It is Dee and Larry Korchin. We are here tonight, Monday night, for our weekly team time. And just really super glad you're here on um, the last Monday of the month of March, March 29th. And um, if you're new to this call, welcome. We're glad you made the decision to be a coach and to join us. And of course, if you've been coaching for a while, we're glad that you come together with us every Monday. Um, really for you, it's for me, it's for you, it's for community, it's for us as a team, just to come together, learn together and grow together. So we always start uh, about 728 with a few minutes of inspiration. I've been doing a couple of different things. And this week thought that we would uh, feature another coach um, and just so we can get to know each other better. And um, Kim is a coach. Monica Lennon is her sponsor. And Frank and Shauna are their global directors. And um, Kim Leininger, you want to unmute yourself and just kind of share us your Optavia story and what you've been working through. Yeah, so um, so I'm just going to start you about in 2010, and I promise I'll keep it the three minutes, but um, I had lost about 65 pounds on another program, um, and I maintained that for about two years. Um, then life hit. Um, in 2012, we had a shooting at our local high school, um, and I happened to be running the local nonprofit that was really kind of in the center of the recovery efforts related to that tragedy. And um, needless to say, I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating, I completely lost myself um, in that entire process. And unfortunately, I gained back the 65 pounds plus probably another 20 or so. Um, and life for me just spiraled out of control at that point. And I took on this attitude of YOLO. And if you have kids, you know, you only live once, right? And that's their, that's their slogan. Um, and I just was at a point where I was going to eat whatever I wanted and do whatever I wanted. Right. And it just, that wasn't the way to go. Um, so fast forward to 2020 when COVID hit, I was in a new job and I was starting to work from home. Um, and I was sitting all day. I was. Oh, no. All right. Come back, Kim. Come back, Kim. Shoot. All right, please bear with us. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Maybe somebody can text her and let her know that she. Shauna's on it. Monica's on it. All right. We'll mute her. We'll hope she'll come back and we'll let her back in. And you want to go over our announcements while we're waiting? Yeah, Kim's going to miss the announcements. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we'll get her up to speed. So um, anyway, that was uh, unfortunate, but that's technology and the show must go on. So uh, let, let's continue with that. Uh, I'm going to jump into right now, just uh, kind of give you an update on our announcements and the key things coming up this week. So what we have is on Thursday, a uh, big reminder, Thursday time for you at uh, 1230 Eastern time. So again, please jump in. That's a great opportunity, just like what is this and how does that work and that kind of stuff. It's a great time for us to have a conversation. Uh, and then uh, just a reminder, looking out to May 15th now, we have the Springfield event. That's going to be a virtual event on Saturday, May 15th. So again, registration will open this week. So we'll probably hear more of that uh, maybe later on tonight. Yeah, later, okay. uh, later this week. It's going to later registration this week. Will open. Awesome. And then uh, for ED and above, our leadership event is going fast. It's oh filling gosh. up. It's almost sold out and uh, registrations will be by um, April 1st for that. Again, ED and above in order to qualify for that event. It is a qualification event. And so uh, again, we're excited about that. If Things you're excited, are drop it in the chat. We'd love to see your energy around it. We can't wait. Yeah, we are. I'm telling you, we're having a blast planning it and pulling it all together and a lot of moving parts, that's for sure. So uh, we're getting there. And uh, thank you to the team working on that with us. And then uh, convention, July 21st to, through August 1st here in Hotlanta. So again, please sign up for that. That is going to be, again, if you've never been to an event in person, this is the event to be at. It's just a great time. You get to meet everybody. And when you connect with individuals, that's really where the change happens. So those are the events uh, that are coming up. And do we want to try to go back to Kim real quick? Yeah, Kim, I see. It looks like you came in on your phone. You want to unmute? I'm, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, technology. So anyways, I left off with the YOLO. Hopefully you got that. <laughs> we got YOLO, exactly. 
And fast forward to 2020, um, I knew my 50th birthday was coming up in uh, June. Um, and here I was, you know, I was at a point, I was tired of crying myself to sleep at night. My body hurt. Um, I, I just, I was miserable and I wanted something better for me. And I wanted something better for my family um, because I wasn't the best um, at that point for them. So I reached out to my dear friend, Monica Lennon, um, to find out what she was doing. Cause I could see, you know, she was making this transition and I wanted to be a part of that. Um, and so she shared, shared Optavia with me and I'm not going to lie. I was really skeptical at first, right? I thought, come on, you know, how could this really work? But I was at the heaviest I'd ever been and I was so miserable. I had to do something. So once I started the program, I mean, seriously, it, I'm sure everybody's this way. I was so shocked and amazed at how life-changing, I mean, instantaneously, I felt like I was changing before everybody's eyes. My energy was through the roof. Um, I wanted to move. Um, I wanted to feel like I was alive again. Um, and so if you haven't you know, read any of my posts, I have to tell you at this point, I'm down 103 pounds. Um, and for the first time since college, I um, am in a healthy BMI. Um, and I have to tell you, when I was in college, I was a division one athlete. So I really um, got myself into a bad spot. But um, as for coaching, um, it took me a few months to say yes, um, because in my mind, I had to accomplish my goals, I thought, before I could help somebody else. And um, I realized that my experience and the journey is never going to be over, that my commitment to this program really is an everyday commitment. This is a lifetime commitment. Um, this isn't a fad program that's here today, gone tomorrow. Um, this is forever, and I have to live my life this way forever. Um, and so, you know, I just have to tell you, I'm so happy that I said yes to coaching. It's really helped me put um, some structure to, to my full-time job, um, because I do work full-time. Um, and my team at work knows that when I leave the office at the end of the day, if they send me an email, I probably am not going to get to it. Um, because when I leave there, I turn it off. Um, and I'll be back the next morning to, to address whatever's coming in. But by coaching, I really am learning to put a healthier balance on my life. Um, how I prioritize what I need for my mind, body, and spirit, because Lord knows if I don't take care of that, nobody else will. Um, so I, I really do. I, I've said it time and time again. I do believe that this program has saved my life um, in many ways. And um, these, every one of you, every coach, um, every mentorship, um, I, I just feel honored and privileged to travel this road with you. And um, I'm just very thankful. For everything I've gotten from Octavia. So well, I'm so, so glad. <laughs> so glad you were able to get back in, Kim. And thank you for sharing that with us. Um, huge, I mean, incredible weight loss journey. I mean, it reminds me of what is possible through this, you know, and what nine months time to be down, you know, 103 pounds. Um, and then thank you for saying yes to coaching and you've been sponsoring. You're now a regional director. So thank you for all you're doing with that while working full time. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, and, and everybody, please, I, I can't emphasize enough. We're part of the family and we're all yeah. part of the family tree. And because Frank and Shauna did what they did and got healthy and then paid it forward then Monica, now Kim and so many of you guys. So again, yeah, don't underestimate effect. that power of the ripple effect and ask. You have to ask, right? Because there's people hurting out there in our world. So thank you again, Kim. Awesome job. All right, back to the news, breaking news. All right, so March success. We have March madness. It truly is madness right now, okay? It really is. I would say, uh, let's just say we are, it is record territory. We are going to have a record month here on our team. So again, keep the momentum going. Still lots and lots of coaches going for uh, ranks. And again, remember ranks, all that means is we're helping a lot of people. So uh, again, congratulations. You guys are doing fantastic. Keep up the great work. And uh, oh my gosh, I'm looking forward to celebrating March uh, yeah. as far as the wrap up, but it is March Madness. So keep it going. And I was reminded today and learned and something I was learning that um, 
our momentum, especially as your business grows in longevity, um, is really a reflection of what you've been doing consistently. And so if you're having explosive growth now or you're growing well um, or not, often it's a reflection of what you've been doing maybe since January. Like there's usually like about a three month lag on the business. So I want to make a point around that, which everybody is helping so many people right now. Like Larry said, you guys are busting records. Um, keep that momentum because everything that you're doing now is going to determine what summer is going to look like right? Like June, July, August. We want to keep the activity, keep sharing boldly like you have. Because like Larry said, there's just so many people so many that people. need this. And we thought tonight we would just kind of go back to basics a little bit around um, some of the, the things that we do that are key, which one of which is, is, is client acquisition, really helping to see, um, connect with people in a way that we can really better understand them, better understand what they're truly looking for, what their desires are, and then how do we deliver our program in a way that really helps them um, understand how it's a fit for what they need and what they are looking for. So we're so lucky because so much of what Optavia gives us is standardized. You know, They keep our process very, very simple. So we use our health assessment and, and hopefully as a new coach, you're going through those first health assessments with your coach and they're modeling how we do it in a conversational style, how we how we connect with people and interact. Um, but what I've learned is, you know, um, there's always room for improvement with our health assessment. There's always a, another level we can go to and better understanding this process and better asking the questions um, and a little bit deeper and being able to help people take down their walls, maybe share a little bit more. Um, and so I just, I, even after 10 years, view every health assessment as an opportunity to connect with somebody on a new level and be able to improve my skills in this area. So tonight we're gonna talk a little bit about the questions we ask, why we ask them, what we're looking for and how we deliver the program as their solution. And then next week, we're going to do a part two where we talk about how do we handle objections or any hesitations that a client might present, um, as well as how do we handle follow-up when they are a not yet. So that's coming. So if you have any questions around that, we start thinking of them for next week. And if you have questions tonight, drop them in the chat. And um, but I'm just going to go ahead and start it off because we've got some really experienced coaches that are going to help us that are real, really good in this um, in this arena. So Beth Bilton is going to take over, really talking about the first part of the health assessment. And if you have one in front of you, just take some notes on it um, on, on how do we awaken somebody. Hi, so thank you so much, Dean Larry, for asking me to share tonight. So if you do have your health assessment, you might want to get it out and uh, jot down some of the questions I'm going to be telling y'all tonight. So first of all, the health assessment should really only take about 30 minutes. Don't go too long, because when I first started, my health assessments were like an hour. That's way too long. So before I do a health assessment, I stop and remember the person that I'm about to speak with. So we're actually talking for a reason, a purpose, um, to share this wonderful gift of Optavia. Optavia. Um, I want to listen to them, to step into their world and ask questions um, and, and not talk too much. I actually, when I first started, I had a sticky note on my computer that said, don't talk too much, listen, because I would just talk way too much, obviously, because I was talking for an hour. <laughs> um, so first of all, right here, it says, you know, uh, I start off by thanking them for letting me speak with them tonight and to share their health goals with me and to let them know that I'm going to be asking them questions to see which program might be the best fit for them. And I ask permission. Is that OK with you? Does that sound good? So if you're a new coach, you can actually read you know, what it says right here. Um, so when I first started, we didn't have a health assessment. So everybody, we are so lucky to have this, uh, this fantastic um, way to communicate with, uh, with new, new and potential clients. So after they say yes, they're, they're ready to go. Um, I say, great, fantastic. I offer three areas of health coaching, of, of optimal health. Healthy body, healthy mind, and healthy finances. Which one are you interested in on focusing on today? Um, but most of them always say healthy body because they don't really know, but I'm planting the seeds for coaching by, by mentioning the healthy finances. So under the step one, the awaken, um, it should take about five to seven minutes to do this part. Um, and we really wanna dive into their why. And I always think of why means what heals you. So really think about that um, when you're speaking with these people, um, that they are in pain and, and hurting and we have the solution for them. 
So ask the question that says right here, um, I would love to hear what you want to accomplish with your health and then be quiet. Most people will say, I wanna lose weight and get healthy. Sure, I mean, everybody does, but you really need to dig deeper. And some of the questions that you can ask, great, what does that look like to you? Be quiet. Why is that important to you? Tell me more about that. Some other questions you can ask, if failure wasn't an option, what would your dream health goal look like to you? What does a healthy bath look like to you? Uh, Dee always says that, I love that one. <laughs> um, so in the next section, what is your main motivation for making changes to your health? Again, some people will say, you know, I just want to, I just want to feel better. Some people might say, oh, I want to fit into my clothes again. And you could say, great, do you have a favorite outfit that you haven't been able to wear for a while? Yeah, sure, yeah, I think I do. How would it feel to get back into that outfit again? Can you see yourself wearing that fantastic dress or that awesome suit and, suit and jacket you haven't worn in a while? Um, so then when you reach, you can also say, when you reach your goal, what things will you start doing that you're not currently doing? And for people who don't really have a big weight loss story, you know, or weight loss, they may not, you know, they go, oh, well, I can do everything I want to do. So maybe say, what things would be easier for you or more enjoyable for you once you lose some weight? Um, I, I, I have a client, she didn't really, she wanted to lose like 25 pounds. And she said, no, I can do everything that I want to do. Um, and I said, well, what do you like to do? And she said, well, we like to go mountain bike riding. And I said, oh, well, you know, if you, when you lose your 25 pounds, how would how would that be easier for you? She said, you know, I didn't think about that. I have a hard time going up the hills. I'm, I'm out of breath. I'm, I, I would definitely like to have more energy to be able to do that. So I thought that's great. You can also ask, how will this affect the relationships with, your, with those you love? Will it make you a better spouse, a parent, even an employee? Most people will say, you know, I, I think I'll you know, get more confidence and more self-esteem. So then you can say, imagine yourself as a healthy, confident person. What does that feel like to you? Have you ever felt that way in the past? And again, listen to their answers. And then when you get done, summarize what they've shared in the present form as if they've already accomplished their goals. So you could say something like, I love that you've, that you've lost 50 pounds and you have so much energy and you're so confident. You're at your 50th birthday party and you're wearing that favorite outfit you haven't been able to wear in such a long time. And you're dancing the night away with your spouse. How does that feel? How great is that to celebrate with your friends and family? Can you see that? Can you imagine that? That's what I have. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Wow. I love those layers of questions you asked underneath. I hope everybody was taking notes and we'll post the replay of this, but just going deeper, going deeper with it. And then actually you stepped into that place of helping her visualize what it was going to look like. Um, but yeah, I've, you know, I've so often, especially working with coaches might hear them say like, you know, I just want to lose 25 pounds, but it's, what does that 25 pounds mean to you? How's life going to be different? Um, I heard, I know um, our next speaker will speak on this before, but I heard something uh, earlier that reminded me, you know, when we're talking to individuals, they're in pain. They're in pain, emotional pain or physical pain. And so what we want to do is really help them identify it and connect to that pain um, because people are more likely, they're like six times more likely to make a decision around that pain than they are around logic you know, and the, the analytical brain of it. So we're, we're looking to connect so that they, it's very crystal clear how we can help Absolutely. them. Yeah, if you can tap into that, that emotion that they're going through. And again, all our clients are have that emotion. It's just a matter of, are they going to let you see it? Okay. And so remember, it's there. It's always there. So it's a matter, like Beth was saying, asking the question to reveal it. Because once they start to reveal it, then you'll get a true picture of what's going on from that standpoint. So um, I just wanted to share uh, the second part of the health assessment. And those are questions four through seven. And then really goes revolves around medical questions. Now, these are very key because, again, if people do have any allergies, anything like that, we want to make sure we get that down to make sure there's no 
um, contradictions with the plan and the program we have. Now, with that said, though, I will tell you, almost everybody can do the plan, okay? Even if they say, oh, I can't do the plan. Almost everybody can do the plan. And there's a way that we can work those things out by contacting if they have some unique thing. No problem. We have a team in our nutrition support area that can help support us in this and how to address whatever medical issue that is. It's very rare that people can't do the program. Now, with that said, I would also give you a little tip. While you're going through, like Beth was saying, right, when she was asking, you know, uh, about what would you, I'd love to hear, what do you want to accomplish? A lot of people are going to share probably their medical issues right away. Well, I love to get off of my medicines. Oh, what medicines are you on? Boom, 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 boom. And you jot them down, right? So you don't have to repeat a lot of these questions. And it becomes just a natural flow in the conversation. You know, the, the, the mom that just said, well, we just had our last child. Okay, so you kind of know they're not going to have any more children. She's not pregnant. She just had a baby, right? So, so those are the types of things you can kind of guess as far as where they are. And then just confirm it. Okay, just confirm it. Well, it sounds like you're not having any more children based on what you said earlier. That's correct. You know, we're not having any more children. So those are the types of things. When you go through those questions four through seven, okay, you can actually do it fairly quickly, okay? And then you hit your story. And when you hit your story, 90 seconds. It's 90 seconds. Just It's like that elevator speech, right? You tell people what's going on because at the end of the day, it's not about you. It's about them. You just want to make sure they know that it's possible, okay? And it's it's possible for them to get healthy. So that's really the wrap up on, uh, you know, yep. those last questions there on the health assessment. So now we've got their pain, we've got their why, we've got a clear picture of what their medical history is. And then um, Susan Geislin, Susan is a, a very experienced coach that runs one of the highest frontline volumes in our organization. So she is uh, very versed in how to connect with people and then deliver the program. So Susan, you want to pick up from the flip side, um, not necessarily every single question, but what we're listening for during those habits and routines, and then how you incorporate that into the delivery of the program and then asking them if they're ready to you know, walk with you. Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to present today. So um, yes, absolutely. Um, Beth did a great job. She's a tough act to follow, let me tell you. <laughs> but, um, and it's great, it's what Larry just said, when um, you're listening to their why, a lot of times they're gonna already tell you what's on part two, which is their daily routine and habits. So of course you don't need to go back in and ask those questions. But one of the things I want you to think about when you do a health assessment with somebody, and I always take a moment before I pick up the phone and call them, and I, and I think about you know, what you believe is what you're gonna project. So, I mean, if you are completely, you know, totally believe that this program can help anyone, whether they wanna lose a little bit of weight, a lot of bit of weight, want to get their nutrition in order, maybe they have the, the healthy mind or the healthy finances, we really can help everyone. And so you're spending that time at the beginning learning the why. And I love that Beth gave that acronym, what heals you. I mean, I'm going to use that. That's awesome. So, you know, remember it's a conversation. We don't want it to be an intake form, you know, answer all these questions. We want it to be a conversation because we're in the relationship business. So when you look at the next page on the daily routines and habits, and usually what happens like when I go through um, what their medical background is, you know, I say, well, I have a few questions just to kind of see where you currently at, are at right now so that I can get a clear picture of what your life looks like right now. Um, and the great thing about that is that can, in the back of your head, you can think about areas that they may need to focus on. Maybe they're, they already love to exercise and it's not an issue and that's great, but maybe they're not getting their water in or maybe they're not sleeping well or maybe they have a very stressful job. So this is a great opportunity to just have a conversation, but ask for Mission. Is it okay with you if I ask you some questions about what your daily current habits and routines look like? So that's when I kind of go into, so how are you sleeping? You know, and I ask just, I take a look at this, the health assessment, which is so awesome. It really spells it out and you can kind of pinpoint which, what you're going to ask, but it's important to find out where they're at in these six categories because they fall along with the six macro habits of health that we have on our habits of health transformation system. So they all work well together. So you get an idea of where they're at. Do they need some areas? Like for example, um, I have a new client. She loves to exercise and I'm talking like two hours. She's like a triathlete. 
I needed to know that because that there would be a different program for her um, based upon the answers to those questions. So remember, it's a conversation. And then as you go through here, you know, just kind of ask, do you like to exercise? What activity do you like? Because exercise is not punishment. It's a celebration of what our bodies can physically do. It is something that we want to help them find um, an activity that they enjoy and just kind of go through them. You know, do you enjoy what you do for a living and finding out what they do for a living is very important because you keep in the back of your mind, we do have the coaching opportunity. So where can coaching help this particular person? You know, um, where are they? Do you eat um, six meals a day or do you have meals? Do you have snacks? How is your water? That kind of thing. It's so important to get that that information because you may have someone who doesn't like water. Okay. Then you know where you're starting with, you know, you may have somebody that's like, Oh my gosh, I drink a hundred ounces of water a day. And you're like, cool. We're good with that. So it's nice to know what you're starting with. Um, and then the other part that's really great is once you get the answers to those questions and you know, you go all the way down there, do you mind sharing your age? What, how much, you know, how tall are you? And that is really important to know as well. Are you comfortable sharing your weight? Because there are different programs based upon how much weight they want to lose. And that is important. Um, and then I, I do ask, you know, who around you will support you? Will your husband, will your spouse, will they support you in this journey? Would they like to join you in this journey? Those are so many important things to, to ask because a lot of times if they don't have a supportive environment, then you need to know that as a coach. All right. That's so important. And then once you get through there and it says on the coach checklist as well, you know, things like consult your healthcare physician, you know, your, your physician and stuff like that. Um, but I will tell you that, as you know, we have that health assessment available to us. This piece, the very first one that talks about the four components, it gives you the verbiage. You know, if you're a new coach, just use the materials. It's so easy. So when you go in, when you find out what they want, you know, what their daily activities look like, it kind of gives you a chance to say, okay, then you can go in and real quick share those components. You know, you get a free health coach, you know, you get me, I'm going to walk with you. We're going to link arms. We're going to partner and I'm going to be with you. And we're going to have the first week, you know, set the expectations of what the coaching experience is going to be for them because you are a professional health coach. You know, you have a business. So set those expectations with this particular client you know, in, encourage them to engage in the community and tell them how important it is to surround themselves with like-minded people, because that will lead to them being successful on this journey. The same with the Habits of Health Transformation System. I can't stress that enough. To me, I tell my new, new clients, that's your magic formula. If you want long lasting success, the Habits of Health Transformation System is going to do it for you. And then of course I explain the nutrition program pretty, pretty short and sweet and to the point. And then I, I ask them, okay, you know, you've got all this information. Are you ready to move forward? And that's where I take it from there. So that's pretty much what I do. You know, I mean, we know we're going to talk about objections next week, but I will ask them, okay, what's your next step? Are you ready to go forward? But you have to ask the question. Don't leave it hanging. Go ahead and invite them to join you in this journey. So that's, a, that's what I work with with clients. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Susan. That was, that was great. Um, one of the things that I, I hear a lot of times from coaches, and I'm going to say it here just so you can take it and then erase it from your mind. Okay. Is that, that saying at the very end, what do you think? Okay. Throw it away. Okay. Throw it away. It's exactly what Susan said. Susan said, so let's get started, you know, or are you ready to move forward today? You know, that kind of stuff. People need the call to action. Okay. What do you think means to them? Okay. We're done with the phone call. See you later. I'll get back to you maybe whenever. Okay. So please remember that that's really critical information because I do hear that a lot. And uh, again, we want to make sure we call, we have a call to action. It's so true. I mean, that's an often uh, missed point is that that the ask, the ask is so important. And two things I heard, I mean, when when um, when Beth really was talking about the main motivation, et cetera, and when Susan delivered, you heard such a calm confidence in them that they they know what they know what they know. 
and they know that this program will help. So they're not in there going, oh, I hope she's not upset about the fuel lanes because we know the fuel lanes are the, the, you know, the answer. So that calm confidence, when people know you're confident and that you could lead them to where they want to go, they are like, they're likely to say yes. Yep. And one, one last thing before we uh, wrap up for tonight. Uh, the other thing is use the information that you know which brought the person to the phone call. So for example, they may be a referral from somebody that was a successful client on the program right? Use that. Oh, I'm so glad Susie introduced us. Isn't she looking fantastic? You know, and you don't want to share about Susie because that's personal to Susie. But again, referencing Susie and the fact that she's found success on the program, that just speaks volumes and lends, lends credibility to the program. So again, another opportunity there. So and to recognize again, the referral partner who's uh, again, taking care of you. So. so next week, we'll continue the conversation with what to do after that. If, if it's not a yes yet, remember, it's always a not yet. And, um, and I just want to finish this up by thanking Kim, by thanking Beth, by thanking Susan, Larry, all for contributing to this call. I hope you guys saw the feedback. Obviously, the, the, it was a great value to you. And uh, we'll post the recording tomorrow. Um, we're going to head on over and really encourage you, if you have the time and can commit, I would encourage you to be on Dr. A's call next. And the field training is on transition. Um, and I know a lot of people will always ask for more training around that. So that would be a really great one to be on. And let March Madness continue. Yes. Take care. We love you guys. All right. Bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye.